Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 4th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery here, and you can see all this cold air spilled out across the Pacific Ocean here, getting this storm system developing here. A cold rain for many areas, although some areas out towards the Kitsap Peninsula are getting some snowfall down to the lower elevations. Highway 101 out there. We're going to get this upper level low to spin off our coastline for a few days, keeping us chilly across the area here. Slight chance of a thunderstorm across some of the Pacific Northwest coming up here. We'll take a look at the extended at the end of the run here as well now taking a look here this is highway 101 out there and you can see there is some snowfall i know this is about 400 feet here out towards highway 101 but yeah take it easy out there if you see that snow flying but generally here in the seattle and portland metro you're just getting maybe a little bit of snow mixing in at times but not much in the way of accumulation now taking a look here, this is for National Weather Service Pendleton, and you can see some areas in eastern Washington, Ellensburg, Yakima, might pick up some snowfall. Of course, the Blue Mountains and the higher terrain are going to be favored there, as well as the Cascades coming up here, but there is a chance for some snowfall across eastern Washington, lower elevations coming up here. This is looking at National Weather Service Spokane here, as well as you can see, it's like Wenatchee, Wilbur, Ritzville, might pick up a couple inches out of this, including the college out there at Pullman, and of course the Cascades are going to be targeted a little bit better across the higher terrain. This is cold temperatures here for Northern California, Southern Oregon, shown here, just kind of highlighting there in the National Weather Service Medford here. This upper level low is chilly out there, just in layers. You know the drill. You guys know how to stay warm here across Pacific Northwest. This is current hazards. They still have the winter weather advisory. Not much going on in the Portland metro there. Look at the traffic cams, and it's mostly just bare and wet out there. But you can't see the winter weather advisory for some of the areas out there for Kitsap Peninsula. Watch out if you're traveling on Highway 101. There is some accumulating snowfall out there, and you can see some winter weather advisories for the higher portions of Idaho on and through Montana as well. Taking a look here, day one thunderstorm potential here. Does exist for the Willamette Valley, mainly Oregon, just clipping southwest Washington. Does include eastern Oregon as well as the upper level low is going to continue to spin some moisture and energy back up across the region. Here's day two, not much of a change here for western Oregon. Now taking a look here at the upper level pattern, you can see Alaska, Washington, Oregon there. You can clearly see this at 500 millibars, this very cold air that's spilling out across the region here. And this trough, man, it is just persistent and wants to hang out for a while. Good news for the ski conditions, though, at some of the passes here across Pacific Northwest before maybe this starts to break down a little bit here and we get some ridging across the area. Can we, I guess we can dream. It's going to eventually happen at some point, right? It's, I know people are getting a little bit tired here of the cold weather here across Pacific Northwest. I think we could all use a break from it. Now, taking a look here at the NAM 3KM, composite reflectivity, precipitation type. You can see the blue, of course, is the snowfall here. Upper level low moving across the area here. Just I see a few snowflakes mixing it out here. You know, Let me know if you see anything different across some of the I-5 corridor down through the Willamette Valley here. And as we go through the day today, see the upper level low kind of spinning out there and bringing some bands of snowfall as we go through Sunday morning across eastern Washington as well. It's showing some accumulations out there for the lower, lower elevations that normally don't see too much. And you kind of see the spin in the atmosphere here as we go all the way out through the 48 to 60 hour period here still going on across the area. This is the European last night's run, and it's showing, I think it's overdoing this, obviously. It was showing some snowfall falling this morning, just a few flakes mixing in. You can see upper level low just kind of spinning and continuing to dominate our weather here across Pacific Northwest all the way on in through Tuesday afternoon shown there. So I'm kind of hoping for a little bit of a break here as we go towards next, some point next week to warm up a little bit, maybe see a little bit of the sunshine and some warmer conditions just for a brief period of time before we bring some storms back in here. So here's looking at total snow Kachera, and you can see the lower elevations not really picking up too much except for along the Kitsap Peninsula there. And then you can see some of this energy moving up around that low pressure system, showing some not bad accumulations here across portions of eastern Washington. So we have to watch this one as you go on in through tomorrow morning. Uh, places like Yakima I can see a couple inches there as well. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. Maybe Ellensburg as well. Now taking a look here, lightning flash density potential. And you clearly see the spin in the atmosphere here with this low pressure system as it brings that thunderstorm threat. Mainly Olympia South, probably here across western Washington. Does exist for eastern Oregon as you go through the day and afternoon today as well. And you can continue to see that upper level load just kind of spinning off our coastline here as we go on into tomorrow, uh, tonight actually shown here as 05Z. Now taking a look here, this is the accumulated model snowfall. And of course the Cascades, the Olympics, good snowfalls coming in here. And this is generally favoring areas a little bit further south this time as that low pressure is kind of hanging off on the coastline there right off the Oregon coast here 
and it's not showing much across the Puget Sound. This is this morning's run here. You can see it really back off instead of the lower level accumulations coming up here. Still shows some down to the Willamette Valley, but this round is not doing too much here. Now as we speed ahead a little bit more, you can see the band also across eastern Washington there. So you, know, you can get some snowfall out there and the lower elevations don't normally see it. Let's look at the timing of that here. So you can see as we go into tonight, that starts to come on and through tomorrow morning would be the preferred favorable time for that snow to fall across eastern Washington. The overnight and early morning hour timing of that would help uh, for that snow to stick down to the lower elevations as well. This is looking at Oregon here. You can see the big amounts of coming across some of the Cascades and the Blue Mountains here. Maybe a little bit of flakes flying across the Willamette Valley. Should not be a substantial snow. But if you look down there, you can see some of this coming off to the coastal range here as you go on in through this evening. On to tomorrow morning, you could see some lower elevation accumulations here along the Oregon coast, especially southern Oregon coast there. So... Yeah, this upper level low is going to be dominated in our weather here for the next few days. This is looking at Idaho and Montana here. You can see the lower elevations, of course, lesser amounts. Not bad across some of the higher terrain just outside of the valley areas there as well. And here we are now going on into Monday morning. So, yeah, continuing this winter in colder than normal conditions here across Pacific Northwest. And we'll show it again here. This is the Gulf of Alaska view, Alaska, B.C., Washington, Oregon. This goes day by day here, and you can and you can see this cold air, man. It just sits across British Columbia and across the West Coast here, very persistent. And it, although it shows a little bit of a warm up coming, maybe later next week, it's still not a strong signal. So we'll have to watch it closely. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up about warm weather coming here for the Pacific Northwest just yet. This is looking at Seattle Tacoma. You can see maybe us crawling out towards the 40 degree range for our overnight lows. And Portland, something similar there. Spokane, cooler, of course, east of the mountains out there with a couple rounds of snowfall coming up in the short term there. Seattle, Tacoma, and this is just not happening, folks. I mean, this showing this two inch and then the mean up towards two inches is just not going to happen for Seattle. And that's kind of where the forecaster needs to come in and, and show this. So I'm calling it right now. You know, you're not going to see two inches at SeaTac here. It's just that time of the year where you have to take into account the strength of the sun and that the models are just not handling that upper level low well and that snow threat across the Seattle metro there. Portland International, you might see some flakes flying here, but don't expect an accumulation of any disruptive snowfall. This is Yakima, a little bit different story out there, a little bit colder. So if any one of these bands sets up over any given area, you could see a couple inches of snowfall out there and it would be sticking out also. This is avalanche outlook here. You can see much of the region is cloaked in the considerable levels here, a little bit lower, maybe out towards western Montana. But yeah, if you're going off in the back country, there's still that snow falling out there. We've got a lot of new snow out there, so have a heads up and check out the site. This is 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. Check out most of the lower 48 there below average to this 6 to 10 day period there. And hopefully we can warm up a little bit here, maybe for a period of time towards the end of next week. This is the wider view of things, North America, and this is what's going on now, the trough across the region. We're looking at the GFS extended forecast here. I'm going to update it there and get all the information we can. You see the trough hanging out there, taking its sweet time, just kind of reinforcing itself a bit as we go through midweek there also. But then you can see maybe a little bit of a ridge building there. Maybe it will give us a little bit of a time to dry out here and warm up across Pacific Northwest. But then, as you can see, you got the extended and storm systems are never far away here in the Pacific Northwest especially during a La Nina spring. So, yeah, we'll just kind of break that down day by day, and we'll kind of work just try to get some more confidence on what's coming later next week here. But, yeah, there is a thunderstorm chance today, so there's some stuff to watch. If you go out in that mountains, you're going to see it, nice amounts of snowfall falling too. So there's always something to do here weather-wise in the Pacific Northwest. You can see the storm system kind of bringing that moisture back across us this morning. The cold rain, not many people love it, but it is better, like I said on Twitter yesterday. It's better to have that cold rain versus that summer fire weather and smoke. But maybe we can get a happy balance here as we start to move on through spring. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I did a video last night on weather sta a little weather station here, the, uh, the Tempest uh, Weather Flow Weather Station. And I found it... Um, very intriguing. It's quite accurate with its temperature, with its barometric pressure. The wind speed has an ultrasonic anemometer. It does UV index and solar radiation, which was staying toe-to-toe -to -toe with much more expensive solar radiation equipment that I have. And it's also got a haptic rain gauge sensor. It's got a lightning detect 
uh, detection system on it as well. So it's it's very good for a nice, affordable weather station. It's really easy to set up. It's all solar powered. You don't have to add batteries to it. So check out that video if you want to get one, use the code, and it gives me a couple bucks and helps out the channel there as well. But anyway, yeah, we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll try to break down what time the system is going to get out of here finally and see if that ridging becomes something that we can look forward to at the end of next week. And until then, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.